Welcome to Highline Excel class number 24. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Week 5, Business 214. If you're enrolled in the class, just go to our Week 5 website. Hey, this is the part of the class where we're going to start to do a little bit of review, meaning we're going to do some things or visit some topics that we've already talked about them, but go into more detail. Not only that, but how do you get good in anything? Practice, practice, practice. So uh, going over the same topics again is always good. Hey, here's some of the topics. We're going to start with order of precedence. Now we have talked about this before, but now we're going to not just look at the list of uh, arithmetic operations like parentheses, exponents, multiplying, down to subtracting, and not just the math order of operation, right? parentheses first, exponents, multiplication, division, adding, and subtracting. But now we're going to look at Excel's list of order of operations. You won't believe how many steps there are between evaluating a parentheses and an exponent. So let's go ahead and look at this list and then look at some examples. Here's Excel's order of operations. Start with parentheses, and there's all of these things in between before we get to exponents. You've got to be kidding me. So let's look at some of them. Excel will first evaluate parentheses. So if we did something like this, equals this number here, oh, I'm sorry, parentheses, this number right here, plus this number right here, close parentheses, times 2. Control Enter, we get our answer. Now I'm going to run Formula Evaluator, Formula formula auditing, evaluate formula. In earlier versions, it's in the tools menu, tools, evaluate formula. I'm going to do the keyboard shortcut, Alt T U F, Alt Tough. And then we can see, we click evaluate. The parentheses are done first, even though the plus should come after multiplying. When you put it in parentheses, forget it. You're telling Excel, do that first. So we get 620, and then we multiply by 2. So that's first. Remember, exponents is usually what we think comes next. But look at this. Uh, colons, uh, for example, inside of a sum. So let's do Alt equals. And I'm going to highlight these two numbers. And at the end, I'm going to say times 2. So what Excel will evaluate is that colon first, Alt TUF. So I get 620, and then the multiplying. So it's going to do that uh, colon there. Um, the next thing that it does is evaluates intersections. Now, I've done a bunch of videos on intersections, in particular to do a, a two-way lookup. But watch this. I'm going to type equals, highlight these two numbers, and then type a space. That's the intersector operator. And then highlight these two numbers, and then times 2. Now, notice boom, space, boom times 2. So really, the operators are space and multiplying. There's no intersection. Let's uh, um, edit this formula. Hit F2. That's what null means. And I'm actually going to uh, move this right there. So now there is an intersection, the number 120. So 120 times 2 is 240. Let's run the formula evaluator, Alt TUF. And there it is. It's going to evaluate that space, that intersector operator, before the multiplying. So we get to, uh, 120 times 2 is 240. Now unions, no way. There's a union. You can put a comma. So I'm going to Alt equals, and I'm going to add this one, comma, this one right there. Now let me show you. I, I typed the comma there. The other way to do that is Alt equals. Click here and hold Control. Watch this. I'm holding control and I click. It automatically puts the comma in. Now I'm going to multiply that times 2. And now when we run Formula Evaluator, you'll see that that um, union operator there will get evaluated first before we see the multiplying. Uh, next we have negation. Scroll down here. Negation. Let's do equals minus. 2 raised to the fourth power. What I'm really trying to do uh, here, because negation will come first, is it will say minus 2. So minus 2 becomes the number, and the exponent is 4. four. So minus 2 times minus 2 times minus 2 times minus 2, of course, is 16, positive 16. 
because double negative is uh, positive. But now if you really wanted the opposite of uh, 2 raised to the fourth, which is minus 16, you'd have to put it in parentheses. So you put a negation sign. But since negation comes after parentheses, way up here, right? Parentheses are evaluated first. We can get around that here. So I'm going to put 2 caret 4 close parentheses. So we um, negation comes first um, right, on a number unless we do something that's higher in the list, right? So negation comes here. Unions, intersections, all the way up to parentheses come first, so that gets evaluated first. Here's another one. I would never do this, but I'll show you that if you are, if you put a percentage into a formula, Excel will evaluate it because there is no number one percent. The number that this symbolic representation represents, format symbol one percent is a symbolic formatted representation of the number 0.01. And so Excel knows that. Let's try this formula. It equals 100 times 1%. Right? So Excel, in its memory, does not say 1% times 100 because it's got to figure out what this really is, since that's just a formatted symbolic representation. Control Enter, and then Alt T U F. And watch. You see the underline in Evaluate Formula is under that. It converts it to a number, and now two numbers can be multiplied. Click Evaluate, and we get 1. Right, and then finally, after all that stuff there, we get to exponents, which in math you always think of doing parentheses and exponents, but in Excel you have all this other stuff. So here an exponent, I'm just going to do caret uh, 4 equals 4 caret for exponent, which is shift 6, of course. And if I want to take the square root, of course, I can do raise to the 1 half, and that says take the square root. I could also uh, do something else like equals 3 caret 2. That is 3 squared, which is 9. Multiplication and division left to right. Um, so equals 2 times 2 plus 6 times 2. So it's going to do the multiplying first. So it's 4, 12, 4 and 12 is what, 16? So there we go, we get that. And if we run the formula evaluator, Alt T U F, you can see that, in fact, it does it in exactly that order. Now, very important, uh, text operators like ampersand and concatenation and comparative symbols come last. And that's very important when you get big formulas where you might be tempted to put parentheses around everything. So if you know that these things come last when you get to big formulas, you, if you know that, you can type in fewer characters. Let's look at an example here. Watch this. I'm going to do 2 ampersand 3 times 3. What? You're allowed to do that? This, what this is going to do is it's going to do the multiplying first, which will give us 9, and then it will join. Oops, I forgot the equal sign. It will join 2 and 9 and give us as text the number 29. Oh, you can immediately see it's text because it's aligned to the left. Let's run Formula Evaluator, Alt-T-U-F. And you could see it evaluated that multiplying first and then joined the two. Um, bum. OK, now comparative operators. Let's say 2 caret 4 is that greater than or equal to, and I forgot my equal sign again. 2 raised to the fourth power is that greater than 66 minus 4 times 2 plus 122. So that's the question. No, the answer is, is that it is not greater than or equal to. Now, what people sometimes are tempted to do is since they don't know that the comparative operators come last, they might be tempted to put parentheses um, wherever they might put them. And so you might go like this. So which it, the thing will evaluate just fine, but then you're typing in extra characters. So if you went like that, for example, that's four extra characters. Exactly the same thing. Let's run through Formula Evaluator here, Alt-T-U-F. And you watch up here as we evaluate it. 
Everything's being evaluated except for that comparative operator. That's only at the end, at the end. So uh, let's go look at this one, Alt-T-U-F. Notice it's going to do the same thing, but those parentheses are extra. So it has a, a couple extra characters that you're typing in. It's still going to give us the same conclusion, the true-false formula. So that is a little bit about the uh, order of operations, or really the order of precedence. We saw that uh, parentheses, and then there's a bunch of things in between before it get exponents. And then it does exponents, multiplying, division, adding, and division all in perfect order. But then at the very end, we have text operators and comparative symbols. All right, when we uh, come back, well, we'll have our next video about uh, some uh, facts about the average function. All right, see you next video.